Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back, welcome back to Bible Read Along. Maybe even welcome for the very first time. This is where we take one chapter of Scripture. We try and read through it each and every weekday. We understand context, application. We highlight some recovery, leadership, and other principles. And thank you so much for joining me for the greatest Bible reading show online at this time from Alberta. So, um... I got to make sure I, I'm clear there because somebody will complain, but welcome back. We are so glad to have you here. My name is Daniel. I love Jesus. He has changed my life. We've been doing Bible read along now for almost, I believe, over four years. And uh, we just share the Bible, share, share the message of Jesus found throughout the entire Bible, 66 books. And uh, we read from the NIV version simply because it's easy to find and easy to follow. So the words will be on the screen, but we are so glad that you are here. If you are brand new, um, we have a whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, Facebook videos, we are live on Facebook every weekday morning. We go, there's a video on YouTube every weekday, the same video here that goes to YouTube. There's podcasts. We are now doing materials and product content. That's the right word. We're doing content for TikTok as well. So if you are not, if you are on TikTok, help us out. Uh, go follow that. If you're on, if you regularly use YouTube, follow that, subscribe to that podcast are available everything you you can listen you can watch we just want you to hear and know and live out the word of god developing bible based that means the foundation of everything we do christ centered always looking to jesus christ spirit filled that we are in need of the holy spirit and that's how we want to live our lives based on the bible christ centered spirit filled to do what god's called us to do and reach as many as possible if you're here in the chat, please say hello. We want to hear from you. Let's go say hi to some people, and then we will jump into the scriptures this morning. Morning, Mike Markey's here. Tessa's here. Valentina, welcome. We are so glad you guys are watching with us live. Ashley Bellamy, Sarah, thank you guys for joining us again. We do invite you to ask questions, leave comments throughout the entire time. Also, good news, the book of Acts, the Acts of Prayer that I have written. This is a 30-day prayer challenge. And the book I have written is actually a 30-day prayer journal. And there is a course coming, a one-day course. It's actually going to be 90 minutes minutes to about two hours um, and it is coming in person and online so you do not want to miss out on that however you do need to register for it so if you would like to register it's free um, we encourage you to buy that book the 30-day prayer challenge the acts of prayer um, but it is absolutely free in person online just to get us going here and get the first course done so we would love for you to join us you have to register, and you can do that at BibleReadAlong.com. BibleReadAlong.com. You can register there. There's a link on our Facebook and stuff as well. But the easiest way, BibleReadAlong.com. Go to the Acts of Prayer course and register so that we know that you're coming. We do have books available for the in-person session. If you are watching online, the best way to get your book is through our website or Amazon, which our website links directly to Amazon. So just go to BibleReadalong.com. It's going to save you a lot of headache. All right. Let's pray and get into the word of God this morning. So Father, thank you so much for your word. Your living, active, life-giving word. We ask, Lord, that it, it touch our hearts, that it open our minds that it fill us with wisdom and knowledge, but also the passion and zeal to follow you in new ways. Lord, help us to build our lives on it, be changed by it, and to live the Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled life that you have called us to. In Jesus' mighty name, 
amen and amen. If you are ready, it is time for the Bible. You know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Type in the chat, I'm ready. If you're listening to the podcast and you're driving, you're working, do a little happy dance and just say, oh yeah, it's time for the Bible. Morning, Matthew. Tessa, I had an amazing weekend on the walk to Emmaus. There was 25 walks going on at the same time around the world. How awesome is that? Very, very cool. Glad that you were able to take a part in that. Acts chapter 8. This is part 2. We've already done Acts 8 part 1. So we're going to kind of skip down here a little bit. But quick recap. Acts chapter 6. The apostles are dealing with... They need um, help feeding widows, orphans, those at the table. And so they picked seven men full of the Holy Spirit to serve. One of them was named Philip. One of them was named Stephen and a bunch of other names that we really don't know um, much about. So we know the names. We just don't know much about them. So we've talked about Stephen and he began to preach and the, the leaders got mad and and they actually, you know, he began to preach. He said, I see heaven. And they stoned him with stones. They grabbed them. They killed it. They killed him. Chapter eight. Now, Saul was there and approved of their killing because of the persecution. The church runs and scatters, but not the apostles. They stayed put. Um, but the church runs and people begin to just share Jesus. Philip is one of those people. He's in Samaria now. He begins to preach the gospel. He encounters Simon the sorcerer. This is a witchcraft warlocked. Um, you know, this isn't magic tricks. This isn't sleight of hand. This is demonic empowered sorcery. And um, similar today, even to what we would consider, you know, there's, I, I like some magicians. There is some magic tricks and stuff I like. And then there's some weird stuff that gets spiritual. Um, you start to get into um, mediums, you know. Um, what's the other word for them? Psychics and, you know, these kind of things. Ashley's with me now, by the way. My wife is here and my cat Rosie, our cat Rosie. Um, <laughs> she likes when I call her my cat. Um <laughs> Our cat Rosie is here. But anyway, so so Philip is dealing with Simon the sorcerer. They're preaching and teaching and they're filling people with the Holy Spirit. We've seen a clear distinction. Again, I've had more arguments this weekend about, um, I shouldn't say arguments, discussions, heated discussions um, about these three things, salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit. And what's needed for salvation. There is many, many people, more than I actually thought, that, um, you know, believe that without baptism, you are not saved. However, I don't see that in the scriptures. Um, there is a couple verses that word it that way. But then when you look at the bigger context of everything Peter taught and, and all these things, it doesn't line up. So anyways... They're here, they're, they've been saved. Simon, now they're being filled with the Holy Spirit. And Simon the sorcerer, he sees this power and he says, give me this power, I will pay you for it. And Peter gets mad. Peter and them came to visit um, Philip in in this area because of they heard the, what's happening with his preaching. Um, and Peter gets mad, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part to share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness. So good news, you can still repent. Even though Peter's calling him out and saying, you have no place with us, you can repent. Um, repent of this. Oh, it just switched to next chapter. Back to app, Acts 8. Scroll down here again. You have no part to share. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord and hope that he may forgive you for having this thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. So what do we see here? And we talked about this in regards to recovery. Simon got saved, but he's still dealing with some character deflects, some flaws. He's so used to having power as a sorcerer and paying for power and all of these things that... Uh, you know, he that was just his common thing. And they go, that's not how the kingdom of God works. That's not how the Christian kingdom works. Then Simon answered. 
No, I prayed, but we can oh, pray again. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After that, they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord, testified about Jesus. Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. I'm going to pray again because my wife's here and I want to pray with her. Okay. I'd like to pray with you. Lord, thank you for my wife. Thank you for our marriage. Thank you, God, for your Bible read along and our family around the world. Our Bible read along family around the world. Bless us as we read your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Philip continues preaching. Philip and the Ethiopian. This is where we're at today. All right. We've done the catch up. We've, we're, we're ready to dive in. Are you ready? You know what to do. Hit that thumbs up one more time. Philip. My phone was dead, so I didn't... That's okay. Philip the Ethi and the Ethiopian. So Philip preached to Simon the sorcerer. Now Philip's preaching to an Ethiopian. Verse 26, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, isn't it interesting? Sometimes when God gives us instruction, now you're going, I've never seen an angel. No. And that's, that's, that's great for Simon. Great for Philip here. Rather, um, we don't always see angels. Most people in the Bible didn't see angels. Um, this is a rare thing. Okay, so an angel appears and speaks to, uh, well, at least speaks to Philip. We don't know if he appeared, but an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go. And he, there was specific instructions. Often when God speaks to us through his word, through others, through our st that still small voice, it's going to be specific. Go to this place. And we may not see the full picture, but we're going to see the next step where we just go, okay, God, I will obey. I will do what you've asked me to do. So he started out and went on his way. And on his way, he met an Ethiopian. And there's a little context button here. So let's take a look. Probably just highlights. That's from the Southern Nile region. He met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandak, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Now, first off, what do we know about this? Obviously we know a lot. He's a ruler, Ethiopian eunuch. Um, he's important official in charge of the treasury. He's wealthy. He's, he is the accountant and the money guy for the queen of the Ethiopians. And he had gone to worship. So there is some sort of connection here to the Jewish faith. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship as a, um, you know, a pilgrimage to get there. So there's a lot that we're seeing about this. He also has a scroll or the book of Isaiah. This would have been rare. These would not have just been passed out like Bibles that we have today. To have a book or a copy of the book of Isaiah shows um, not only his wealth, it shows his commitment to the faith of Judaism, because this would have been rare to find. Um, the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. See how God leads? Go to the desert road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. Okay, Lord, I'll go there. He didn't know what was next. Then all of a sudden there's an Ethiopian on a chariot. And now God says to him, go be by the chariot and stay near that chariot. Okay. So Philip, supernatural moment here, verse 30, Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. This is a little chariots of fire moment here, you know, go run to him. Do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. Um, it was probably in slow motion. This is the movie version. You can read it in the Bible. We're just reading it. So uh, he ran up to the chariot. He gets there. He's hearing him reading the prophet Isaiah. So Philip is also trained. That's why he was chosen to serve. He knows the Jewish faith. He knows what's been going on and has now committed to the Christian faith by giving his heart to Jesus and making, committing his life to the Lordship of Jesus, believing he died and rose again. Um, 
we assume, <clears throat> but we don't know if Philip was baptized or not, but I assume he was, but let's keep going here. How can I, sorry, do you understand what you are reading? Philip said, verse 31, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me, this tells a lot. This, this little phrase, how can I understand this? He is following the Jewish faith. He's given a lot of money, time, dedication. He's even gone on pilgrimages for this. He has fulfilled all the religious duties. If this was modern day English, um, let's say Western civilization, this would mean, you know, this guy's in church every week. He went and traveled to a conference, to a, to a big church, to a mega center, whatever you want to call it. He went there. That's what Jerusalem was at the time. He began to learn. But then he says, I just don't understand it. He's doing all the right things, but his heart has not yet been changed. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. <coughs> Excuse me. So he invited Philip into the chariot. To this, the passage of scripture, the eunuch was reading. This is what it was. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Little context note here. Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8 is where he's reading. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, Please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? So he understands Isaiah is a prophet. And he understands he's saying he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And he was humiliated. There was no justice. He was killed. All of this he understands. But then he says, is he talking about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. This is such an amazing insight and tool for us to share the gospel. Sometimes we want to overcomplicate the gospel message. Well, I don't share because I don't know all the answers. Well, what questions are you answering? Start with the questions that people want to know. I've had people message me even when years ago when I was a youth pastor. I need to talk to you. I need I have some questions about Christianity. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to ask these big, huge questions that I don't have answers to. Questions that I don't know. Questions that, that take some faith. How do you define the Trinity? Can you prove it? Can you show, you know, some and big questions. And then usually they would come and their question wasn't even that big. It was actually something like, you know, if Peter did this, why did what? La, da, 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 da. If Noah built an ark and all the animals were on it, how come dinosaurs died? How come, you know, and there'd be stuff like this. And I'm like, that's your question. Okay, well, let's look into it. Let's find some stuff out here. Um, start with the passage. You start with the question. Start where people are at. What are they asking about? What are they talking about? Use those opportunities to lead to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Philip did this. Verse 36. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? Another little context note here. Some manuscripts include here, Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's added in some manuscripts. It's not included here. Um, this is where, now not to argue Bible translations a little bit, but this is where, see, the NIV takes it out. And nah, 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 nah. Did you read the little button? <laughs> Did you read that little note? Because it's even in your Bible. It would actually physically be in your Bible. That whole thing is in there, but it's at the bottom where most people don't read it. Um if you believe. Now, why is this important in some manuscripts? Again, we see that Philip actually believes in baptism. 
And I'm going to hit on baptism probably a lot in the book of Acts, not because I think you guys need to hear it more because that's how I learn. I'm an audio as I'm hearing it, as I'm t teaching it, that's how I learn as well. And so I want to learn more because there really is a lot of people that will say without baptism, you are not saved. And I don't agree with that. I don't see that in scripture, but, um, Let's uh, let's keep going here. Anyways, so if you believe, if you have already experienced salvation, in other words, according to that extra manuscript there that's been added in, if you've already believed that Jesus is the Son of God, died and rose again, you're saved. Now you can do the act of baptism. And he gave the orders to stop the chariot, verse 38. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water and Philip baptized him. So we learn a little bit here about baptism as well. We learn based on that extra part, that manuscript, you should believe that Jesus died and rose again before you're baptized. Now, we also know that they went down into water. This is a symbol, not only a symbol, this literally happened of much water. You know, baptism isn't a sprinkling. It's not a, it is a immersion into something and coming out new. In fact, the word baptism before John the Baptist, it really was not used, baptismo, it was not used a whole lot in a religious sense. It was actually used in pickling um, fruits and veggies. And so there was, you put something into the vinegar, into the gall, into the, and it pickles it and it comes out as something else. You put a cucumber in, it comes out a pickle. You put, it was also used in dyeing clothes. So you would put the clothes into the tub of dye. They would be completely submerged. They would come out in a new color. Baptismal, that's what that actually means. To go deep in, to be buried in and come out changed. Um, this is the symbolism of baptism, that we have been changed by Jesus Christ. His blood alone is what pays for our sins. And we experience, we have been washed by the blood. That's why churches, Christians say that. It's a weird thing to say if you're not a Christian or you don't know it, but that's what it references. That we, because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, the Bible says in Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So there needed to be a blood sacrifice. That's why throughout the old, the whole Old Testament, they had blood sacrifices because the only way that God has set up, well, why is it that way? God set it up that way. I don't have all the answers. That's what God required. God set it up and he, there is a blood sacrifice that pays for sin. Jesus became the ultimate blood sacrifice, paying for our sin. And then we are washed in it. We submerged in it by faith. We don't actually go dip in blood. We don't pour blood on us. That's weird and gross and don't do that. We, it's an it's a, a act of faith. I believe that the blood that was shed on the cross covers me so deep like a baptism that I come out changed brand new. Here's water. What can stand in my way of being baptized? If you believe that Jesus is Lord and the son of God, you can. Verse 38, he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down in the river. Philip baptized him. And when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. He gone. Bye, Felicia. These are the miracles that happen in the book of Acts. He baptizes him. He comes out of the water. Philip's gone. And the eunuch did not see him again. But he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared <coughs> excuse me, at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Now, if you actually look into where he was, he was transported like he was, you know, or time traveled as Ashley said, you know, there was a... Um, he was in one physical location and then he was, this wasn't suddenly like, it was like God put him where he needed to be yes. at one time, but then put, he didn't need to be there anymore. So put yes. Him somewhere else. God took him where he needed to be. That can be for us too. And that can be for us. You know, God can, let Not me, can let me, God physically could transport you that I have heard stories of that happening. However, 
It's rare. These are miracle signs and wonders. It's rare. But what can God do? What is the application of this? We shouldn't be praying and going, oh, Lord, transport me, move me. I need to move to Hawaii. I need Hawaii, Hawaii. God, I really feel called to Hawaii right now. You should just take me. No planes. No, just put me in Hawaii. Um, it doesn't work like that. And that's not even what Philip wasn't praying for this. He wasn't. He was just in the middle of doing what God had asked him to do. And suddenly God took him where he needed to be. So let's, I'm doing the clap thing now that that means listen to me, right? Um, you know, but he, so he was doing what God had called him to do. And suddenly he was where God needed him to be. Think about this for our own lives. And we'll end with this today. Are you doing what God's called you to do? Because in a moment, God can literally take you out of that situation, out of the hardship, out of the pain, out of, I've just been doing recovery and I'm healing, but man, it's been a long journey and I'm, I still feel broken and I'm just following the Lord and I'm just doing what he's, and in a moment you're suddenly leading the group. How can I know that? Because it happened to me. <laughs> that's, that's what's happened. You know, in a moment, God suddenly goes, hey, you're just doing what I've called you to do. I'm going to take you and put you where I need you spiritually, emotionally. Um, it could be physically, but again, that is a rare, rare, rare occasion. So we got to read that in the context there and understand that. Um, but God, I just love that picture of God. If you just do what God's called you to do. Think of even Philip here. Um, what was he doing? He was just serving the apostles and the disciples. And then they said, we need you to serve tables. Okay. I'll serve tables. <laughs> well, suddenly by serving tables, persecution, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, persecution comes to Stephen. Phillips, one of the ones that scatters and he still just keeps preaching Jesus. And now he's gone from serving to waiting tables with a title, to now preaching to, to Simon the sorcerer who gives his heart to the Lord and needs to repent. And, you know, they're working out some character defects. Then all of a sudden he's preaching to the eunuch, the representation of the queen of the Ethiopians. He went from serving widows, orphan, and homeless people at a table to speaking to royalty just by doing what God has called him to do. That's what I'm saying. These are Joseph type moments. You may feel like you're in prison in one moment and in the next moment you're standing before kings sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may feel like, well, your family rejects you, nobody likes you, and suddenly someone calls and your whole situation changes and they get saved and their family gets saved and they're, you know, because you just are doing what God's called you to do and then he takes you to where he needs you to be. I hope that makes sense. Um, please let me know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Again, for those that are not on Facebook Live, please thank you for subscribing on YouTube. Please subscribe. Help us. We are we are about 40 subscriptions away from the next level in YouTube that we need to reach um, to, to change the username and the, have a specific website and this stuff. And it all helps. We are now on TikTok at Bob, the Bible Read Along Official. TikTok Bible read along official. Um, you'll find us there. We are putting out content. There is content going on TikTok that is exclusive to TikTok that you're not going to find anywhere else. Podcasts. We have your fa your favorite podcast platform, Apple, Google, Spotify, um, anchor, all of the, all the big ones. You can find our podcast on there. And again, we have this books resources, check them out. And the big one that I want to just encourage everyone in again, the Acts of Prayer course. The course is coming. The book is out already. You can get the book available at BibleReadAlong.com. Then we are having an in-person course on April 30th. We are having an online course May 1st. And we encourage you to come be there. Check it out. Be a part of what is going on. We would love to see you. Have you be a part. We need you to register. And again, you can do that at BibleReadAlong.com. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, there was a couple questions. Sorry, I should look over that. Uh, good to see people here. Matthew asked, 
Is Philip a Christian? Yes. Did Philip get baptized? We don't know that Philip got baptized, but we know that he taught the eunuch about baptism, so we assume it's important to him. Um, so you don't need to be baptized in order to baptize somebody else? Oh, there's a question. Do you need to be baptized in order to baptize someone else? Um, like the machine, <laughs> somebody's the last year, yeah, you're going to get some flack for your answer. No, this. I'm going to say no. Um, the quick answer is no. That, that would say that Philip was baptized. Yeah. And I, I assume that he was because he was part of that early church and, you know, but you don't, let me say it this way. I actually believe baptism is very important. I believe, thank you, babe. Um, I believe that's baptism, that's okay. I believe baptism is important. I believe it is an act of our faith. Um, I even believe that something supernatural can happen during baptism. I've heard too many stories of people. Also, you have an angel um, on face. I have an angel on my face. Um, we have too many. I've heard too many stories of people, even with addictions and things, that they get baptized, and literally at the moment of baptism, things are broken over their life, and they come out clean, and they don't need it. They don't. Again, those are miracles. Does that happen every time? No, it's a miracle. So baptism is important. It's spiritual. It has power. Is it needed for salvation? And that's really the argument that I get into with, with people. If you're not baptized, are you still saved? Yes, I believe so. Which means if you are saved, you could baptize someone else. It also means... Um, I think as humans, we almost need that physical aspect of it for that validation for ourselves. Yes. the and And that's the other thing, like... She just said it's a validation for ourselves, and it is because I'm going to move the camera here for a second. Um, it is because um, th that is a specific date, time, place that you can actually mark down. And when the enemy comes, go and goes, Are you really even saved? Yes, I'm saved. You know how I know? I believe in Jesus. I've committed my life to him, and I was baptized at this time, this place, this location. Devil, shut up. Negative thoughts, shut up. So do you need to be baptized to baptize other people? No, any Christian could baptize other people. But obviously, if you believe in baptism, you yourselves are probably going to be baptized. Um, just just assuming that. Now, would you have to know? Is there, again, there's not a, yeah, there's so many arguments on this. And I love it. And you may hear them. You may see them. Um you know, you may not even be in that circle at all. You might go, no, I've never heard anyone argue this ever. Okay, cool. Um, they are out there and, uh, they like you. and they like me. <laughs> yeah. They like, and I like them. I kind of seek it out too, a little bit. Um, you know, and I have people point out, well, Peter, you know, Acts 238, which we've already read, but let me look it up here. This is one of their main verses if that believe salvation is baptism you know without baptism you are not saved is acts 2 i believe it's 38 we're done bible read along for today i'm just talking about baptism but if you want to keep here and feel free peter replied repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit that's not saying you need to be baptized in order to be saved. That's right. I still read even that verse that they use as their see, repent and be baptized. It's both there. You have to have both. Um, I don't see that. I actually see these as three different events. Repentance, salvation, baptism, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I see that over and over again throughout Acts. We know now here's where people go, but that's what Peter said. And I said, yeah, but you're taking one verse. And you're making your whole belief system around it. Because in the rest of Acts chapter 2, there's other times that people got saved and they weren't baptized. Acts chapter 3, Peter begins to preach again to a crowd. He healed a man and then he preached to the crowd. And again, no baptism. 5,000 people got saved, were added to their number, it says, and no mention of baptism. Peter, who also wrote 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 3 Peter, all of his books... Um, people will then argue, well, in 1 Peter chapter 3, it talks about baptism. Yes, but out of the five chapters of 1 Peter, baptism is mentioned once. Faith is mentioned all throughout the time. Um, my work's calling me. Um, faith is mentioned all throughout the book of 1 Peter, 2 Peter, that 
um, you know, without baptism. So I, we got to look at the context when we read this. Now, Matthew asked a question, what is a eunuch? Um, let me get you the actual definition so that I'm not screwing it up. But define eunuch and then we are done. Define eunuch. A man who has been castrated, especially in the past, one employed to guard the women living in area of the oriental cart. So the court, he has had his male parts cut off. That's basically, of that's Not basically that what he but means. That's exactly what he does. Yeah. Too. And so many, many historically eunuchs, and we know, especially with this one mentioned in Acts chapter eight, the eunuch works in the royal palace for the queen. Um, so what is the point of this? The point was a eunuch would commit so much to this position that they would willingly be cut, have their stuff removed so that they could not sexually attack women. Yeah. So to them, it was, I am fully committed. This isn't going to turn into a weird lust situation. I'm not going to try and be inappropriate. Do I'm not. No, don't do that. Um, You know, I, mean, I, I don't think God's called us to be eunuchs today, but. And again, even through history, if you look, those are very few of the population that would go that far. Um, so that's that's a eunuch. I hope that makes sense. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. We will be back tomorrow with a guest host, Pastor Brian Thompson from the founder of Home of Hope. I'm looking forward to it. Acts chapter 9. Tell a friend. Bring a friend tomorrow. Same, same channel. Same time. Same podcast. Same YouTube Check it out. If you use TikTok, go follow us. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com